It's so neat to be walking out in the woods and looking at it like it's a grocery store. We actually have some muscadine here, it looks like. That's right, for our ancestors, there was no concept of wilderness. You know, everything, everything was carefully managed for food production. And so it was kind of a grocery store and also a, a utility store in the same way. Mm -hmm. What we have here, as you said, is muscadine. And the Choctaw language, that's called soko. And uh, the little muscadines are just starting to come on here. In a couple months, they'll be ripe. They'll be large, purple, succulent, wonderful grapes. And they're incredibly tasty. We'd eat them raw, or um, we'd also take them late in the season and put them in river cane baskets. And then we'd put them under a slow-moving, cool stream, and that would be cold storage that would keep them through winter. Oh, wow. Okay. And speaking of river, we have some river birch right here. We have quite a grove of them this growing is, in the wetter soil conditions. Yes, this is another tree that's common in our homeland, Mississippi and Alabama, but it's also found here in southeastern Oklahoma. Very nice. They're beautiful. And of course, they've got that exfoliating bark that just really is nice in the wintertime to look at as well. Yes, they're beautiful. You've got some sandy soils here, so they must be happy with uh, the, the drainage that leads towards their roots and stuff. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, let's head on down. I think we have another tree we want to look at. All right. You've talked a lot about the relationship between buffalo and the Choctaw. Uh, we have here an invasive the eastern red cedar. Can you kind of talk about the relationship with the buffalo that it had? Sure. Uh, this tree is called Chawatha in the Choctaw language. And today it's invasive because landscape management practices have changed. For Choctaws, this plant is important. Um, you can use it to, to help with purification because of the, the way the needles are, the aroma that it gives off. Um, for us, it, it was an important plant. And bison, which you were talking about, manage this plant naturally and rub their horns on it and rub their back on it. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, they break down the trees and they, they destroy them. They get them out of the prairie areas. But um, it seems to help them with the bugs. I guess the sap in the tree being purifying helps keep the bugs away from them. So it, it's interesting how they manage the landscape. So they actually use it as kind of a insect <laughs> repellent. Yeah. And then uh, you have another tree over here that's a purifying type tree. This is the spiny ash. And you have another name for it? Yes, it's called Noti Alicci in the Choctaw language. That means tooth doctor. Okay, is that because of the spiny uh, trunk that it has or? Some people might call it that for that reason, but in our language it's called that because this tree has compounds in the inner bark and also in the leaves that will make your mouth go numb if you chew on them. So how would they go about harvesting that for uh, a numbing agent? Well, the inner bark is stronger than the leaves mm -hmm. and you cut a strip lengthwise on the branch in the bark and you scrape off the outer bark then peel the inner bark, you wouldn't want to take it short ways across the branch because it would girdle the branch and kill it, but doing it this way, it doesn't hurt the tree. Okay. Cheers. You can feel it tingling immediately. Ian, it's just been beautiful out here. There's so many amazing plants. Um, and here we've got another tree. What is this tree? that this, we're looking at. This tree is called coffee in the Choctaw language. Coffee? Mm -hmm. Okay. In English, it's called sassafras. Oh, right. So if you've had root beer, it's made to imitate the flavor that comes from this tree. Um, Choctaws would gather the leaves a little bit later in the season, um, towards fall when they turn red, and dry them out in the sun, and then pound them up into a powder. And that was used to thicken stews. That's where filet gumbo comes from. Choctaws would trade that powder to French settlements at New Orleans and Mobile, places like that and it helped to create that whole style of cooking. It's just a nice, wonderful plant. And you said that you can eat the leaves, is that correct? Or That's right. It's a little fuzzy. So I just... <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Tastes good to me. It has a sweet flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Um. It's not making my mouth go numb, so that's good, unlike the last tree I was chewing on. <laughs> you know, you don't swallow this, right? Mm -mm. Okay, great. Well, let's keep on looking at some of the other plants you have. And, of course, we need to be careful of the stinging nettle that is out here. It will grab you. And what was the Choctaw name for that? It's Hashtaposa. That means burns a man. It's also a useful plant. You can eat the leaves when it's young. If you parboil them, it neutralizes the noxious chemical. Um, you can eat the seeds, they taste kind of like nuts. 
just a little bit later in the season than where we are right now. You can also make fiber out of the bass fibers and the stalks, and you can use that for um, making yarn, textiles. Interesting. Really good plant. Great. Being from eastern Oklahoma, I recognize this tree. It looks like we've got a hickory. Yeah, it's one of the most common trees in the eastern woodlands. A lot of people don't realize it, but back about 5,000 years ago, Native Americans managed the whole eastern part of the United States to create an oak hickory forest. Of course, the reason for that was food. These trees are, are known as oksat api in the Choctaw language, and that literally means the stem of the hickory nut. And I, I think we've got a few nuts on these trees forming already here. Yeah. They have very, they have husks on them, and then they have very thick, hard shells, and they're interfingered with the nut meat. So that's the challenge. You know, it's it's this awesome sweet food, but it's difficult to get at. Choctaws would do this in different ways. One of the ways was to make hickory nut milk. We'd harvest the nuts, crush them open, and then throw the crushed nuts, husk and all, into a pot and boil it. And the heat would extract the oil from the nuts up to the top, and you could let the pot cool and then fish off the oil. And it, it's very sweet. It, it compares favorably with cream, but it's a lot more healthy for you. Oh, very interesting. The trees were used in other ways also. We're here in Atoka County, Oklahoma. Atoka is the name of a, a Choctaw leader, and it, it translates to stickball playing field. This tree is what Choctaws made our, our stickball sticks out of traditionally, and we still do today. It's a game that's kind of like lacrosse. Um, this is also the type of tree that we made most of our bows from. Mm -hmm. This is also the type of tree that we made the mortars and pestles from to grind up corn or different food products in the kitchen. It's just a nice, wonderful native tree that ties in deeply with our culture and still does today. Hickory, very important tree to the Choctaw people. Absolutely, and many others. Ian, we have covered a lot of ground and a lot of trees. Why don't we take a seat under this beautiful bodark tree that you have here? Can okay. you tell me about the bodark? Sure. What we've covered is not even the tip of the iceberg for Choctaw plant knowledge. You know, it's, it's very deep, but um, you know, like this tree, it has roots that go way underground. This tree in the Choctaw language is called Kati Lakna. That means yellow thorn. If you look at the smaller branches, they've got thorns on them. And if you were to cut through this tree, it has a fairly thick sapwood that's light colored, but then the heartwood is just electric yellow. Mm -hmm. This tree was used for making bows by Choctaw people. Um, it's, it's got a lot of lignin in it. It makes a really powerful, superior bow. You can use the shavings that are a byproduct of making the bow from that electric yellow wood and use those to create a dye. In the western part of Atoka County, which is the county that we're in now, there was a mill in the mid-1800s, and this mill processed the seeds from hedge apples, you know, the green fruit that the bodark tree produces. And they collected the seeds through this mill and they shipped them all over the Midwest and the plains as a material for building fences. They take those seeds and plant them and create a fence row out of bodark or hedge. And so the fence rows that you see all across the central United States made out of bodark, they actually originate from trees that come from this county in Oklahoma. It's um, a really useful tree. That's great. Well, thank you so much for this. It's just been an absolute pleasure walking around on your land down here in southeastern Oklahoma. I've been honored to have you. And to close, how do, how do we say goodbye in Choctaw? Well, there's no way to say goodbye per se in Choctaw. We just say, I'll see you later. Okay. And in this case, the way that you would say, I'll see you all later is hachipisa lachiki. I'll leave it with that because I don't want to mess up your language. Well. We say that the only way for the language to die is for people not to try. So if you mess up, that that's fine. Okay. Um, at least try. Okay, say it one more time for me. Hachi pisa. Hachi pisa. La chiki. La chiki. Very good. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.